they have five students here. There are what we call the X and the Y coordinates. And do you know that man has both X and Y? Man, not human beings, but man has a he. You have both. So out of you, single man can come, a woman can come, a man. Okay, so it's like this. So out of this spirit can come this and can come that. That is the binary principle. It cuts across. So all these are this. So it's a spirit, it's a spirit. All these are in this and it's a spirit. And it was just a tricky question I passed on, just for us to know that it is not because it is a part of him. So no, it is a part of him. It is coming from him. Do you know that the God you and I said, he has an image. Do you know? Do you know that God has an image? Yes. God has a reflection. And according to Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15, Jesus Christ is the image. Okay? Now, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God said that, God, Bible said that God created both male and female what? in his image. So what is telling you is that God did the creation of both man and woman in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the image and out of God's image came forth what? Man and woman. So out of Jesus Christ, the man is the X and the Y, man and woman. So out of Jesus Christ today are two natures. You can assess the nature of a feminine aspect inside Jesus as the image of the Father. You can also assess a masculine nature. You can assess a feminine nature until today it has not ended. All these two natures can be assessed inside our Father, inside Jesus Christ. That is the same principle running in here. You know that even the according to first Corinthians. Three, Jesus Christ is our wisdom. Jesus is our wisdom. So, and wisdom is a spirit. So, Jesus, the wisdom of God, He is a spirit. And out of Him, the image of God, we have this. It confirms Genesis, it confirms 1 Corinthians 15 verse. Nothing is contradictory here. Out of Jesus, the image, who is a spirit, came both man and woman, masculine and feminine. Out of Jesus, who is our wisdom? He is a spirit. God is a spirit. Jesus is God. John 4 23. A time is coming. She was a person who will worship God in what in truth and in spirit. Why? Because our God is a spirit. So God who is a spirit, Jesus Christ is a spirit. He is wisdom for us. So he who is a wisdom for us is a spirit. And out of him comes this. So it confirms it. It's confirms everything. This is not a strange doctrine, it's not a strange teaching, it is nothing strange here. So don't be worried that they have not heard of a spirit having a feminine name. It is in your word, it is in your Bible, it is just that it, a certain veil must be lifted for you to see. Just a certain veil must be lifted. So you and I should be able to touch on some of these aspects. We want to jump very uh, quickly into the types of wisdom so that I can pick only one and give attention to it. We will not talk about the types. I will just list them and then pick only one and we are going to talk about them. There are types of wisdom. So types of wisdom. Maybe you think that when the word of God says wisdom, it is talking about one general wisdom for all. The word of God says that if there is anyone that you know, you should ask. You should ask yourself that what type of wisdom was God referring to? Because there is no one type of wisdom. There are types of wisdom. So what type of wisdom was God referring to? What type of wisdom did Solomon ask God for? Okay, you need to go so that you don't go and pray amiss. You don't go and pray amiss. God, I need to What's wisdom? You see, he said, 
That is why he doesn't get the wisdom because he should know specific what you are asking for. What type of wisdom are you asking for? Today, you know what type of wisdom are you going to ask for? Yesterday, on the way coming, a pastor in the bus reads a song. This is my story, this is my song. A blessing and Savior, you know. Suddenly, I started thinking into those words. And I asked myself, this is my story. What story are they talking about here? This is my song. The song we know, which is the song we are singing right now. But what is the story? It's like this, you are been praying for me. What wisdom are you praying for? What wisdom are you praying for? So the first type of wisdom is where we lay our emphasis on. Is the one called the one. The woman. This type of wisdom. Woman. Woman. This is feminine in nature. And here are some of the scriptures and Proverbs 4 5, Proverbs 4 7, Proverbs 4 11, Proverbs 7 4, Proverbs 2 verse 2, Proverbs 2 verse 6, Proverbs 3 verse 13, Proverbs 3 verse 9. So, anywhere or any time you come across this type of verses, it is talking about a particular unique wisdom called the woman. It is called the woman. You will, you will actually give attention to this one so you will understand. It is called the woman. It's called the woman. And it is about Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. And Proverbs 12, verse 13. Proverbs 12, verse 13. Proverbs 12, verse 13. The woman, woman, the feminine, who's woman, woman. So get this scriptures. And today, let it sink down into you. Now, whenever you are praying and asking God for this one, know the specific type of this one. You are asking God for. You are asking God for. I will claim this one very fast because we will come back to this one again. This is our focus today. The next one is the S E K E L. Sequel. Sequel. This one is masculine in nature. And then we have first chronicles twenty two verse twelve. No verse twelve verse six. Proverbs 12, verse 8. This type of wisdom, this type of wisdom, if you read this few verses are telling me, is for insight. This type of wisdom gives you insight. Gives you insight. So, are you in need of insight into a situation? Are you a prophet? You want to grow in prophetic insights, you need this one. Do you need insight into the work or the job you are doing? Do you need God to give you details into whatever you are doing? You ask God in prayer for this particular type of wisdom. You ask for this wisdom. Remember, the masculine, he has the seat, the raw seat. 
you need ideas for some business, you want to become an entrepreneur, you need more ideas to start your business, my brother and sister. This one. And get more. Ask God specifically for this type of issue. You will not focus on all of this type of wisdom because uh, I will have to teach a lot about some of these things in Hebrew and then bring you down to the New Testament or era for our understanding. So I'm not going to give you all these things to me. The third one we have is the Tushia. The Tushia. This one is also filmed. This is also filmed. This one, this type of wisdom, is one for identity purposes. And it is a son of man. This one, a son of man. Or a sound mission. A sound mission. Sound mission. When you present a situation before you, the case is becoming difficult and tough. With this type of question, you can give a sound judgment. You can give a sound judgment. Sound one, a sound wisdom. Now, these are scriptures for this wisdom. All our brothers, 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 brothers. But I want us to consider something about this wisdom. Everybody needs it. This wisdom, everybody needs it. Now. I want Proverbs chapter 8, reading from verse 15 to 18. Let us see how this wisdom brings. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 15 to 18. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 15 to 18. Who knows what you know? Yes, verse 15 to 18. By me, please wait and do this. Okay, so by this one, kings do what? Win. Kings do rule or they win. Do you want to rule in your family? Do you want to win when your season comes? You need this. Take it. That's why I say that today, to be a light of you, when you are asking God for wisdom, know the what type of wisdom you are asking for. Let's go. By me, kings win mm. and do this. Justice shall by me, princes, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I know they still love me, mm. and they still seek me diligently to find me perfect. Riches and honor shall be mine, and carry riches and righteousness. Amen. Amen. Riches and honor. Anybody sitting here, anybody listening to me. I believe that when they present you riches and manna, you will not say, I need riches and manna. Every mortal being, every soul wants riches and manna. Riches and manna are with air. <laughs> so, when you are asking God for, for uh, the grace to be rich, you don't go and pray for the kind of wisdom we call the seeker. If you are, if you are asking for that kind of wisdom, that kind of wisdom does a different thing. It doesn't mean this part. Remember, we said the feminine receives the seed and manifests it. So with her is riches. She will manifest it in your life. By her, kings rule. By, by her, one can assemble and gather the nobles of the earth. There are spiritual nobles God has assigned over the earth, and there are physical ones, the AU, where these are leaders of the earth. There are also spiritual ones. How many of us here has actually had an encounter with one of the nobles that controls planet Earth? How many have actually encountered one of the nobles that controls planet Earth? None. But with this one, 
If you pray consistently, persistently, without giving up, concerning this type of wisdom, through her services, you will engage and you will see the nobles of that control the right. This information I'm giving you. People have not heard it. People don't know. All what they know is pray for wisdom. But they don't know. And if I have to break each of this wisdom down, from the Hebrew alphabet, I think you cannot do this. You will know that inside your God is too much things, you don't know too much things you are not accessing at all, and you are suffering from nothing. So Jesus said, the lack of night. Because we are lacking in the parish. So please, if you need riches, money, Larger, the one I guess, roots or deleted is what you should be going in for. The fourth one is the sakar. The sakar. We have Job 34, verse 35. We have Proverbs 1, verse 3. You can read any of the verses, just one verse for us. Just one verse for us. Just one verse. Yep, two verse for me. Yes. Verse one for me. Verse one for me. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and ethics. So, you see, in all your Bibles, it doesn't really specify what type of wisdom it is talking about. It says what you wish for. But this type of wisdom is a car. The, the second thing is what? To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and ethics. So, this one is a wisdom unto direction. Are you a prophet? Are you going in the prophetic grace? You want to go in direction. You want to go in direction. You need to walk very close with this wisdom. You need to go very, very, very seriously with this wisdom. You can't let it go. Even if you are not a prophet, you are a child of God, you want to be successful in this life. You just cannot let go. It's wisdom. You need wisdom to grow your family. You need insight into the future of your children. If you have insight into who your children are, you'll be very careful how to raise them up so you don't miss their future. Wisdom does this. Wisdom does this. Can I read it? You also have the fifth man, the left. Left. This one is masculine. And we have scriptures like Job 36, verse 5, Proverbs 10. This type of wisdom is called the wisdom of the heart. The wisdom of the heart. The wisdom of the heart. The, of the, heart. the, the Hebrew will write to you. Lamed and that Lamed is authority or control in the house. So this type of wisdom is the Lord, the authority to control your house. To put your house in order, you need this type of wisdom. And interestingly, our brother says something that the most only nature is what? Tough. To bring order, see it is confirmed. This one is masculine. To control your house, you need this type of wisdom. He said something like that, that the man is tough, bring order. And our brother was saying that, for instance, to buttress what he said, said that for instance, if the house is not in order and you know that that day is coming, you try to put the masculine in. Check your heart. And your heart, 
in the heat, your heart in the heat, in the heat. This lament that is. So the heart simply means the controller of the heart. So your friend or anyone who controls the heart, your brother, the house, is the heart of the house. And if your wife is the controller of the house, your wife is the heart of the house. So you need this. If you want to put your children in order, if you want to train them right, you have to go and pray for different types of reasons like the woman or the woman, the sicker, you pray for this. I believe that this teaching is sinking and it will help you to create a right frame when you are asking for wisdom to know what type of wisdom to go for. If you need wisdom in the prophetic to go to in adequate directions, you should know the type of wisdom to go. So when you are operating a certain type of wisdom comes to you and operate with you. It is so wonderful, it is so beautiful. You see, there was a time I was ministering somewhere in Sinai. And as I, as I was ministering, the angels that came around, I, I was operating with them very well. And it was just beyond amazing. And then the covenant brother was there. And after the ministration, he called me and said, Wow, see, when we ministry, the kind of garment. God has given you, God will be able to see you. And I saw something on your head. And he broke the thing down and described it to me. And he explained what he does. And he said that I saw fire coming out of that which was given to your head. And a certain type of colors were coming out of it. He did not see the ministry. Is this not beautiful? Is it not beautiful that when you stand before the, the people of God and you are wrong, you have not passed anywhere, you have not consulted anything, you are wrong in prayer and fasting, and God opens somebody's eye like that to see how the feminine wisdom is with you, how the masculine wisdom is with you, how the seeker is with you, how God through you gives a certain direction, how God through you is giving a certain insight. Wow, your ministry will be beautiful. Your ministry will be beautiful. Your home will be beautiful. You need this for your home. The sixth one is the leader. The leader. This one is also familiar. Also for me. And this type of wisdom is for discernment. Do you want to go to discernment? Do you need this type of wisdom? And to 39, verse 26. And to 39, verse 26. First case, chapter 3, verse 9 10. This one gives you discernment. When this one stands next to you, she will be able to aid your spirit to discern the meeting you are sitting under. What type of spirit is present? If you are walking and if you are open to this, Solomon was asking for this type of wisdom. But you see, the type of wisdom Solomon asked him is not one. It's not one way. Solomon, according to these things, Solomon was asking for a heart to be said. And the heart to be said is this one. Really? 
Let's go here. I think maybe the best I have. Yeah, I have missed the best. So let's drop the note and focus on this one. The next one we have is the pattern. The pattern. This one can get from some. One point five is two to two. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Some one of five of the streets. Some one of five of the streets. To find his princess at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. So, from this verse, can you tell me is this one masculine or feminine? So, I decided to let us from the verse. If you are really following it, and if you are really comparing how mother, father, husband, wife, team operate in your home, you should be the teacher of which one in this. Okay, so the next one is the Tapum Tapunda The Tapum Tapunda This one is masculine uh, So one three six verse five. Sorry, one three six verse five. The next one is the omut. The omut. This one is feminine. Proverbs chapter nine verse one. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1. Yes. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1. Wisdom has grown in the house. She has given out a certain place. Right. So now, today, let me change your concepts about family. Everybody believes, okay, let me ask the question before I change the lesson. Who is the head of, of the family? Woman. Okay, somebody says woman. Who is the head of the family? Oh, see, now, I'm gonna, I'm afraid to talk. Please, please. The head of the family is the son. Yeah. Yo, so now from woman to son, okay. And now the of the house of the father is the man. And it's here, it's a marriage in the service of the father and the house. And no one serves the father. But we are letting say that the father is the strength of the house, a son is the head of the house. So we put this So No, everything we are saying, you see, when he said, he actually quantified it by saying in our tradition, let me see. So in our culture, according to New Testament order, it's like this, and according to the Hebrew. Okay. Now, so from the Hebrew, the head of the house is a son. That is the meaning of 
of who a son is. A son is the head of the house. Now, a father in Hebrew is the strength of the house. So now, this house, where is the strength of this house? This whole house, who can tell me where the strength is? It's a foundation. If I go mad and I say, I'm going to remove the foundation, I'm going to remove it, what will happen to them? It will collapse. So this whole beautiful structure is resting on what? The foundation. So foundation is the strength of this whole building. And a father in your home is not a head. According to Hebrew perspective, the father is what? The foundation on which everything is built on. So if you are a father, you don't have a prayer life, and your children are building on you, you can see the kind of future you are leaving your children. They will suffer, Papa. And that is how some of our parents are. That is how some of our lives is not going the way it's supposed to go. Because the father you have is prayerless. He doesn't pray. He's not serious with keeping. He doesn't practice anything but this is to go to John, come and eat something and watch movies and laugh and go big belly and all that stuff. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 7, how about chapter 2? It's talking about how the sea will cover the earth, how God separated Genesis 1 7, how God separated the waters above and the waters below. There is wisdom below, which is common to all men, and there is a higher wisdom above. That kind of wisdom is called the celestial wisdom. From that realm is where the angelic wisdom is. So now, before you can be brought into the water above, the wisdom above, you need first of all to be what? Separate what we call baptism. Baptism separates you, it cuts you off and prepares you for your assignment. So here you also experience baptism. And then you will be anointed. Whenever you, you accept Jesus Christ, you go through baptism, Jesus anoints you. This is what happens spiritually. You are anointed. After your you will be anointed. Because of the class you are going in, there is what we call the worship or the rebirth. Jesus said, you cannot know the mysteries of the kingdom. You cannot enter God's kingdom. John chapter 3, except you are born of God, of water and of the spirit. So this one is a born again to the spirit world, not born again to the physical world. So this one is a gateway into the higher realm of wisdom, the higher